Oh, goody. All right, what's going on, everybody? Zombies here again, and today we're back with another Marvel Snap video. So today we have Hercules dropping, and well, looks like he is going to probably be the most underwhelming card of the month, unfortunately. Uh, Hercules is a 4-6 with the ability the first time another card moves here each turn, move it to another location. Uh, so yeah, this card seems very, very niche, and he is at a power and cost level where he's coming down later in the game, so naturally it's going to be harder to actually make use of the effect, given that you're not going to have as many turns to move stuff around and make use of it. I really do think this is one of the worst cards we've had in a while, which is a shame because like the idea is interesting. And I think if they changed it so it wasn't just moving one card per turn in terms of its limitation, maybe there'd be a little bit to experiment with here. The main thing coming to mind is Heimdall shenanigans. You would think that the main benefit of Hercules would be, oh, you can have some cool synergy with Heimdall where you Heimdall your stuff over and then stuff will bounce back out of Hercules uh, lane and get an additional benefit from the moving effects. That's just not how this works though. All this card does is it bounces one card out of the lane per turn. So let's say you yoink over something with a Spider-Man. Your Spider-Man should bounce out. Your opponent's card will stay in. Maybe they'll have some synergy with the new Kingpin, which is a card we're going to be using in one of the uh, lists we have for today. But overall, I am not very high on this card, and it would not surprise me if this is a card that got a buff. Move decks in general really aren't in a good spot right now, whether it's traditional Heimdall move or some of the more recent Silk move stuff. It just doesn't seem to be at a place where it can compete super well with a lot of the stuff we have going on right now, uh, mainly because a lot of the stuff in the game is just going really, really tall in ways that move doesn't really have a way to outpower and the only way they can interact with it is usually Shang-Chi or Shadow King which frankly a lot of other decks are able to play those cards more effectively. In terms of the spotlight week here it is unfortunately not very redeeming with Werewolf by Night and Howard the Duck being the other two available cards. Howard is dropping down to series four today so no longer a series five card there for the people who've been waiting to pick him up but honestly both Werewolf and Howard just aren't really seeing a lot of play right now. Werewolf is still a playable card in the right shell. There are versions of Loki and Annihilus that are still running this card, and it's not a bad card per se, uh, but it just feels very limited, the shells you can run it in. So unless you really, really like one of those two specific decks, uh, it doesn't feel like there are as many places to play Werewolf right now as opposed to how it was before it got nerfed. So yeah, if there was ever a week to pass on spotlights, this feels like a very easy one. But yeah, that's the card. Let's take a look at some of the day one decks. The first deck we have here is the one that I think is the most likely for Hercules to actually do something in, and that is Phoenix Force. So the idea with this one is we are doing our Phoenix Force combo shenanigans, eat up a multiple man or a human torch, bounce it around the board, and uh, Hercules just enables us to get some additional bounces. You get your Phoenix Force on turn four, you play Hercules on turn five, you move something into it, you can even go spider and then move something into it. Uh, so you get those multiple move procs, get more Phoenix Forces or a bigger torch. And while that's kind of a neat idea, and while this is kind of a cool concept, uh, I don't think it really fixes the issue Phoenix Force has right now, which is it's having a really hard time going taller than a lot of the big decks, most notably Blob stuff going around right now. And it can also be kind of weak to Shadow King tech. I think Phoenix Force is a fun deck and versus the right matchup, it can do all right. Uh, but the other thing that it has an issue with is the fact that, well, you have to be an early snapper with it because once the opponent sees you assemble your Phoenix Force combo, uh, a lot of the times they're getting out of there unless they have a way to deal with it. And Hercules just doesn't really advance that game plan much. Like, he gives you a potentially better high roll when you already have your combo going together, but he doesn't really do a whole ton to help you out when that's not happening. So, even though I think this is probably the one where Hercules might get the most value, uh, I just don't know how much better this deck is going to be if you're putting Hercules in it, sadly. Then we have Kingpin moves. This is just a more generally move-focused deck. We have a lot of the standard move stuff going on in here. And we're using Hercules as a way to have synergy with this new Kingpin, who's a 2-3. That is going to be afflicting negative power on the opponent when you put one of their cards into it. So the idea here is we're using stuff like Spider-Man, Polaris, Juggernaut to knock stuff into the Kingpin lane. And then Hercules will bounce them back out of it, potentially buffing our Kraven, as well as moving the thing with smaller power out of the Kingpin lane. Shang-Chi is pretty much required here as we need a way to deal with big threats. 
We're using Zabu as a way to get some of these four drops out earlier, like Shang, Hercules, Stegron, and sometimes Miles. But in general, we're just trying to move stuff all around the board, get some advantage with Craven and Kingpin as a result of it, and then close out the game with either just our big statted cards while keeping the opponent guessing where we're playing for, or just using Shang-Chi to flip a lane. Silk's another card you could consider for this deck as she naturally has been fairly good in these move shells, but I opted to go with Juggernaut instead just for a little bit more synergy with Kingpin, though that's mainly gonna come down to some personal preference. And the last place I would be interested to try this card out is a uh, lockdown style move deck making use of the new Quake. So we have Storm and the redesigned Quake, which I'm really excited to try out in a lot of decks, but definitely particularly this one. Uh, always been a fan of Quake, what she can do with Storm and just messing up people on location so that she's more consistent. I think this card will do a lot, lot better in a variety of decks, including this one. Silk's always been kind of nice in a Storm deck because you can swoop into there after the lane gets closed down. We have other ways to do that with things like Vision and Doctor Doom. And Hercules is kind of cool because there's more Vision going around. So if you use Hercules to close out a lane, he can prevent the opponent from being able to move into it later with their Jeff or their Vision. Iron Lad gets some good value here. We have a lot of good targets to hit, most notably Doctor Doom among others, but Doom's usually the best one. Sometimes Alioth is good too if we have priority. Jessica provides us another thing to slam down after Storm to help close out that lane if we're actually trying to win the Storm lane instead of swap it around. Vision is just some more good stats move utility, and Alioth is great if we're already in the lead, have that Storm lane or another lane locked down, and we can just guarantee a win by slamming this card on the final turn. But that's going to wrap it up for our day one decks. Let me know what you think of this week's spotlight and Hercules in the comments below. And let me know if there's anything you're planning on trying with the card that we didn't showcase here. I'd love to hear it. I would really like this card to be good as someone who likes move stuff. But it definitely would not surprise me if this card is a contender for a buff in the not too distant future. As I really don't see how it makes too much of an impact on any of the decks that might want it in its current form. That's going to wrap it up for this one though. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.